shall we stand to usher in our pulpit participants? Good to be here this morning, isn't it? 
you know, I just said to myself, God has been so good to us all week, you know. I see your faces now. And so many faces I had saw, I haven't saw today. But we know God is still good. Amen. So Amen. we just coming to you this morning. I had so supposed to have been up here last week. I wasn't, but I had a scripture from David writing that I wanted to read to you. It says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is yeah. for brothers yeah. dwelling yeah. together in unity. And that's what we do. And we want to be in unity. It's like the precious ointment upon the head that runs down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirt of his garment as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descends upon the mountain of Zion. For there the Lord command the blessings, even life forevermore. You say, God, that evermore he has blessed each and every one of us. So I just come to you to say, God is good, and he has blessed us all. I, I'm so glad to see you. Let us pray. Most Holy Father, we just want to thank you for this day. You have brought us back to this place to worship you in spirit and truth. We want to give you all the glory and all the honor, thanking you for another day, another hour that somebody didn't see, but you blessed us to see it. So as we go through this day, Father, help us to stay focused on you, the day that you have set aside for us. Help us to be in tune with your blessings. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. and happy Sabbath. And since this is the last Sabbath before Christmas Day, I can say Merry Christmas. I have a short reading I'd like to share with you if you don't mind. It's called The Smells of the Stable. A stable. What a place to give birth to the Messiah. The smells and sounds of a barnyard were our Savior's first human experience. Like other babies, he may have cried at the sounds of the animals and the strangers parading around his temporary crib. If so, they would have been the first of many tears. Jesus would come to know human loss and sorrow the doubts his brothers and family had about him, and the pain his mother experienced as she saw him tortured and killed. All these hardships and so much more awaited the baby trying to sleep that first night. Yet, from that very moment, Jesus was God with us, and he knew what it meant to be human. This would continue for over three decades ending at his death on the cross. Because of his love for you and me, Jesus became fully human, and being human allows him to identify with us. Never again can we say that no one understands us. Jesus does. May the light that entered the world that night cast its brilliance into the deepest corner of our souls this Christmas, giving us the peace on earth of which the angels spoke so long ago. I was just thinking that since Jesus died on the cross for our sins to save us so we could be with him, because he loved us so much that one of the many ways we can show our appreciation and to share his love is to show one another God's love through us. That brings in the welcome. And Goshen knows what we do at the time of the welcome. 
First, let me ask, not if we have guests, I know that we do, if I can ask our guests to stand or raise their hands, please. We have uh, Cece and Teresa's mom is here from the Dominican Republic. <laughs> and also her sister from Darien, Illinois. <laughs> if we have more guests, will you stand for us, please, or raise your hands just so we can see where you are. We like to share the love of Jesus with you. Oh, amen. Amen. Now, Goshen, can we do what we do best? Get up and show some love. Amen and happy Sabbath.
Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, it is a beautiful Sabbath day. I am so glad that you're here. We're here to praise God and to give him the glory that is due unto his name. And I must say, you look mighty dapper out there with your red and your different colors. And, but I tell you, the best, the best thing, the best dressed person in the house today is the person with the baptismal robe on. Because we know that that is celebration in heaven when God unites somebody in marriage with Jesus. And so for that, we give God praise for what he is doing at Goshen. There is a mighty move of God that is happening in this place, and I just want to praise God for what he is doing in our lives. We have been, at least I've been enjoying with my prayer partners, the 40 days of prayer. I'm telling you, if you are not taking part of the 40 days of prayer, I will encourage you to get on board because it's your devotional life that is a stake. You know, what is important, my brothers and sisters, is that for all of us to be covered with the righteousness of Jesus and to be covered with his righteousness, we need to be in a relationship with him, a devotional relationship. If we're not in a devotional relationship with Jesus Christ, you can count it all lost. I don't care how much you come to church. I don't care how much you preach and teach. If on a daily basis, you're not having a devotional life, that means get up in the morning, spending time with prayer, spending time in God's word. If you are not doing that, you can come to church until the cows go home. And it wouldn't matter when Jesus comes because he would say, I don't know you. We don't have a relationship. We never had a relationship. So I want to encourage you, if you're not having a devotional relationship, the 40 days of prayer is to help us to develop that relationship with Jesus, develop that devotional time. So get a prayer partner and, and, and connect with them so that you can encourage each other. That's why you have a prayer partner. Encourage each other on the journey, on this journey that we have. Jesus is coming soon. I, I don't think you believe this stuff, but Jesus is coming soon. And you don't have to look too far to know that Jesus is coming soon. So it's time for us to try to get ourselves together. And all we have to do is to surrender to Jesus and ask Jesus to take full control of our lives. And he will do just that. Uh, our young people is going to be having, and I, I'm so excited about this. I'm excited about the, uh, what, what is it called? It's called something here, Bible Jeopardy. Amen. Elder, Elder Winston is, is spearheading that where the young people are studying. They're supposed to study some Bible texts, and they'll be, uh, at the end we'll have a Bible Jeopardy, and they'll be able to get some gifts and some incentives just to encourage them along. And I, I want us to encourage them as they study God's word. Amen? Amen? But if we're not studying, how can we encourage them to study? So I want us to encourage them. We study. It's when the church, when pastor and people under the word, there's nothing that will be able to stop us from being victorious. So let's encourage each other. Let's pray for each other. 
and let's have a wonderful Sabbath experience today. God bless you. Morning, happy Sabbath. This past week has been a good week. And every time we think of the fact that we were able to get up in the morning, God deserve our praise. As we look outside earlier this week, we had a little snow. God deserve our praise. I know getting up this morning, looking outside to see the sun, God deserve our praise. But to be able to walk into his house of worship this morning and into his courts with joy, he deserve our praise. He deserve our worship. And so now let us give him our honor and our worship this morning. We invite you to please stand for our opening song. Jesus, the light of the world. Walk in the light, the beautiful light, because he's Jesus.
That's why we give him total praise.
are the source of my strength. You are the strength of my life. I lift my hands, hey, in total praise. You are the source of my strength. You are the strength of my life. I lift. My hands in total praise. Heavenly Father, we just so grateful, Lord, that you, you give us the opportunity to praise you, Lord, and you give us the opportunity to worship you, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you accept this praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. It's prayer time, church. Paul says, when I think of the wisdom and scope of God's plan, I fell to my knees and prayed to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and in earth. I prayed that from his glorious unlimited resources, he would give you mighty inner strength through his Holy Spirit. And I pray that Christ would be more and more at home in your heart as you trust in him. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. And may you have the power to understand all God's people should, how wide, how long, and how high, and how deep his love really is. May you experience the love of Christ. Through it, it is the great way you would never fully, under, although you may not fully, really understand it, you will be filled with the fullness of life and the power that comes from God. Welcome to come to the mercy seat.
Are there any wounded hearts in the sanctuary today? Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with praise in our hearts and on our lips, for you are an amazing God, an awesome God. There is none like you in this world or any other world. Only you have shown us your goodness, your love, and your kindness, and you have promised it will last forever. Thank you for this season to remind us of your love. You gave up heaven where everybody adored you and worshiped you to be born by your created being, suffered and died for us. We can't praise you enough. We can't give you enough. We can't love you enough. Father, forgive us for we are sinful beings and we have given into our own ways our own thoughts, and our own plans. We are nothing without you, Lord Jesus, and because of your mercy, we can feel you tugging at our hearts with loving kindness. Help us not to resist. Oh Lord, clean, up, clean us up, dear Father, so that we will be prepared to do your work. Pour out your Holy Spirit so we will des desire to tell others how much you love us and how much you love them. Now, Father, we thank you. We thank you for being a great and perfect and awesome God. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins, our past sins, dear Lord, our present sins, dear Father, and our future sins, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for providing for us. We thank you for total provision during good times and during painful times. Now, Father, please bless us with your healing for our sick members. Touch their bodies with your holy power, dear Lord. Send your guarding angels to go with us as we come and as we go. Bless our 40 days of prayer as we reflect on your love and your kindness, the Heavenly Father. We want to get to know you more and more, dear Lord. We want, to, we want to love you more and more, dear Heavenly Father, and we need your help. Bless the leadership of this church, dear Lord. Fill them till they overflow with your Holy Ghost. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayer, dear Heavenly Father. Continue to be with us and guide us is my prayer. In thy son's name, amen.
He's King of Kings. And He's Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. How many know that there's so many wonderful things about Jesus? I don't know about you, but I can't name them all. But somebody wrote somewhere, his name is wonderful. He's a wonderful counselor. He is a mighty God, an everlasting father. He's a prince of peace. There's so many wonderful things about him. Wonderful thing about Jesus. There's so many about him. Let's sing it again. So many His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. He's a wonderful counselor. He is a mighty God. Everlasting. He is a prince of peace. There's so many. So many wonderful things So many So many wonderful things So many wonderful things His name is wonderful. His name is He's a wonderful counselor. He is a mighty God. Everlasting. He is a prince of peace. There's so many. So many wonderful things. He's wonderful, wonderful, yes you are. Wonderful, glorious, wonderful, 
glorious, glorious, yes you are.
can I have all the little ones come for a children's story, you know, at this time? Collect the offering. Good morning, boys and girls. Um, the day before I start um, my story, I have two questions for you. Um, can anybody tell me what holiday is coming up? Happy Christmas. Okay. Now, what does Christmas mean to y'all when you first think of Christmas? When Santa gives the presents. <laughs> I like when Santa gave us presents. <laughs> Santa gives us presents because he got a lot of money. Okay, okay that's enough. It's kind of interesting that you... <laughs> okay. Okay. It's kind of interesting that y'all say this because my friend Nick actually had that same thing. She was wondering... What is the true meaning of Christmas? Usually he would think the same thing, like the lights and the gifts and the cookies and the milk and everything. But actually, I th on his little lesson, um, his journey, that he actually learns that Christmas means a little something else. Okay, my friend Nick is not from um, America. He's from this place far, far away from here, where the griots are and they wear togas and they believe in other gods and stuff. And if you don't know what that place is, it's called Greece. Where he lived, yeah, Greece. The, um, where he lived was by the sea, and they're known for fishing. So like they catch like um, salmon and goldfishes and all that other type of stuff, and sell it. 
So, um, so they, um, that's what they were known for, they're fishers. Yeah. And so his father was a preacher and slash fisherman. And um, so ever since he was younger that he learned that um, God like, loves him and um, like to give to the poor and help those in need and all that stuff. So, but he was like any other little kid. Like he didn't really pay attention. He was more like, I'm worrying about going fishing, having fun, hanging out with my friends. And one year, that um, there was a bad disease that, or sickness across the land that was going around. And as like a good Christian man, his father went to go pray with those people and try to help them as much as he can because they, they came from very rich families. So sadly, that his family passed away and he became an orphan. So, but, but since he, his father was very rich, like pretty bad, you know, and um, he, was, he didn't have to worry about going to like a home or anything like that. So um, a couple of months go by, and he's still missing his parents, and he misses the love and the, um, the affection that he used to get when he, um, his father was around. They used to go fishing. They, he used to um, read the Bible to him, even though he barely paid attention. He missed those moments. So he decides to run away and go on his father's boat and find happiness somewhere else. So years go by, and he's still looking, and he's looking, and he's looking, and he seems to can't find it. One day, the ship docks at a place called Christmas Town. And when the first thing, like y'all are saying, like when you think of Christmas, you think of happiness, joy, the lights, the excitement, the presence that Santa leaves for y'all. So, yeah. And so he's like, okay, maybe I can find happiness there. Maybe I can finally be happy and not have to worry about being, not have to feel sad anymore. Well, so he goes around and he's seeing all the pretty lights and all that stuff and it's temperament. It's temporary because he's not, it's not really filling the um, hole inside of his heart. He's not feeling happy. It was like a quick little second and he's back to being sad. Well, he's walking around the town and all that stuff, and then he noticed that there's a church. So he's, and on the woman, in a strange, was acting strange, she was handing food to people. So he went up there and said, like, what are you doing this for? He said, oh, because I want to. I, I know these people are hungry, so why not feed them? Because that's what God says to do. So, but why? Does that make you happy? Does that's what that um that make you feel good to do that? And she said yes, because um she gave us um the special gift that um he gave her his son Jesus. And he said, tell me more about this. So she went inside and handed this big old book, and it said Buy Val on the front cover, Holy Bible on the front of it. And then he, then she showed him a story about the, the first Christmas gift, which was Jesus, and how like God gave His only Son to die for us, you know, His only Son. So then he realized at that split second that wow, this is what true happiness is: giving to others, like get, being selfless, you know, not the Christmas lights and the trees and the cookies and all that stuff, but actually giving to others that are in need. So then, like when he went back to um. Greece, he finished his father's work and he came to America and he started um, open, he started helping other people and he ended up feeling really happy about um, the thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, um, that's the story for y'all. <laughs> <Like this. laughs> Can I get a boy and a girl to pray? Ladies first, you want to pray? Everybody close their eyes and bow their head. Yeah. Daddy Jesus, that was said something. Daddy, you something. Die for us. Jesus pray. Amen. Amen. Holy Father, thank you for everything. <laughs> we we hope that you're good at school and we hope we hope that you're special. And we help and we hope that you 
that you pray for all people who are alive. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes, Father, thank you for this day. Help that <coughs> we learn one lesson and we be obedient. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Can we all go back to our seats quietly? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Jesus, Holy Father, thank you for everything you gave us. Thank you for our house. Thank you for our family. Thank you for everything. Thank you for everything. For, thank you for everything you made for us. And thank you for and thank you for everything you gave us. Thank you for the flowers. Thank you for everything you made. Amen. Amen. This morning, church, we're doing a new thing. On behalf of Women's Ministry and the pastoral staff, we would like to recognize our families that have lost loved ones during the year. We'd like to give you a little token to remember your loved one by. So I'm asking the elders if they would come and help me as I call your name. I let you to present the flowers here, the poinsettias, to the family members as representing the family of someone who's been lost. Um, Sister Kemp, she's not, she here? Sister Kemp? I don't see her, so I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask Derek if, if he would accept Sister Kemp and make sure that she gets her, her flower. Elaine Strickland. We know that it's never easy to lose a, lo a loved one, and usually the holidays are the hardest time. So we would like to just give you something to remember your loved one by and to just know that Goshen loves you and that we're here for you and we have not forgotten about you. Audrey Young Lane. Barbara Austin. Can someone make sure that Barbara Austin gets her plant, please? Can someone raise their hand and make sure that, okay. Thank you. Sister Murphy. Sister Lizzie Brown. Edith Hawthorne. Yvonne Poyer. Teresa Jackson. Maxine Daly. Florian Willis. Have I overlooked anyone? OK. 
okay. We know that God heals all wounds. Yes. Okay. Can someone make sure that Belinda gets one? Okay. Sister Eileen said she would take, oh, somebody's taking Sister Austin for Sister Eileen. Somebody's taking her. If I've forgotten anyone else, just gently come up to me and, yes. There's some, we have a little but if I forgot anyone else, just gently come up to me and I will make it up to you. Just gently whisper in my ear and I will respond. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, church. So for a reason I did not um, talk about the December birthdays, we have several people who have birthdays that are coming up this week. On the 23rd, Jasmine Frazier. On the 25th, James Ferguson. Also on the 25th, Stephen Faulkner. Eileen Taylor on the 27th. And Alan Williams on the 27th. Happy birthday to all. We've also been celebrating our December anniversaries. Elder Derek and Darshe Winston will be five years on the 26th. Amen. Aaron and Stephanie McKenzie will also be on the 28th of December for 11 years. Amen. And we have our very own Pastor. Gordon Frazier and Christine Frazier. If you can join me here on the podium, please. Please join me at this time. I think some people should be standing up. Praise God. Let's give them a rounding ovation. <laughs> Pastor Frazier and Lady Christine, we appreciate your, um, the way you simplify what marriage should be about that you put God first in everything, and it exudes from you all. We thank you so much for what you do for our church, and this is a token from us for your anniversary for you to be able to celebrate. We love you both.
slave is a brother and in his name all oppression shall cease 
sweet hymns of joy in a grateful chorus praise we let all within us praise his holy name he knows your need No stranger behold your king before him. You lowly bird, behold.
by the angels, born in a holy mansion, the Virgin Mary, his mother, and Joseph was the servant father. So wise men came from afar, they was guided by the shining star. You see the baby where we laid, yeah, in the manger, we're filled with hell. Listen while I tell you about Jesus, 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 me and my. Okay. 
there was a woman from Egypt. She said, if I can touch, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I love him. I love him. I love him. Jesus, Jesus. I love him. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he's king of kings. He's the Lord of Lord. He's the great I am. He's the I am that I am. Jesus. Can't nobody do you like him. Can't nobody hold you like him. Can't nobody Shake you like it, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, what a, oh, Jesus, Jesus. So holy, me can I? You like, you know. Listen to. Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. Jesus, Jesus, holy, meek, and mild. Life. Listen to the angels sing, to glory, glory, glory to the newborn king. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. Jesus, Jesus, holy, meek, and mild. Listen to the angels sing, sing glory, glory, glory to the new. Born King, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I, I, I am excited. Jesus, what a wonderful child! We need to give God praise. Because God is deserving of our praise. Only at Goshen you can come and you can hear Nick sing Oh Holy Night like that. Come on, somebody. And put a little bit of uh, maybe Spanish, Italian, French, one of those, I think I end the last one, French, put a little French into it. And, and then you, you, you come out and we, we get Jesus from the gospel choir. What a wonderful child. A, a little bit of classical mixed with gospel. It's heaven is going to be all right. Uh, I tell you, heaven is going to be all right. Because we're going to get a little toe-stomping gospel. Uh, you're going to get a little clapping. You're, you're, that, that some angel is going to 
burst out in operatic singing. And then the choir will join in. What a wonderful time yeah, we will have when Jesus comes. Well, to God be the glory. all that he has done. I, I hear David say, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. Uh, the humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. They looked at him, and he was raided, and their face were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around about them who fear him, and deliver them all oh, taste. I hear David say, oh, taste, oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Blessed is the man who trusts in God. Take your Bibles and go with me to the book of Luke. Luke, the first chapter. I want to tell you a familiar story. When you found it... Luke chapter 1, we want to read from verses 26. Would you find Luke chapter 1, would you stand as we read God's word together? Still hear pages going, so I will give you another second look in the New Testament. And now, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent to God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph. And of the house of David, the virgin name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, And consider what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of God of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. And indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her. This is now the sixth month for her who is called, for her, sorry, sorry, she conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month of her who was called barren. 
For with God, nothing is impossible. I want to speak to you for a few moments on the topic, nothing is impossible with God. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, would you, for this moment, speak to us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We have all gone through different situations in our lives. We have all been to some mountaintops and some valleys in our lives. But through it all, I just stopped by to remind you today that with God, nothing is impossible. No matter what situation you have faced, no matter where you are on your spiritual journey, nothing is impossible with God. Uh, this young woman, her name is Mary, as the Bible says. She had nothing, she was nothing to look upon, but she was just a plain old lady, young lady. And somehow, when Jesus ever steps into your life, when Jesus interrupts you on your journey, things get messed up and turn around. You see, Jesus, whenever Jesus comes by and he stops by your resident and he is about to do something miraculous for your life, things change in your life. Uh, so Mary, this young woman, nothing to be desired, was on her own business. She was nothing of importance. She was just a young lady going about her business. And one day, the Bible says that, that Gabriel, this mighty angel, visited her. Gabriel stopped by that place called Nazareth and found this virgin, never been touched by a man. She was pure in, uh, because of her purity. You see, God looked down and God saw uh, this woman and this young woman and God knew that he could do something in her life to change her life. You, you see, you got to understand today, my brothers and sisters, that God can do some powerful things if we but just let him. Ah, uh, God can change your life if you would but just let him. The Bible says, I only have about 15 minutes and then I'm going to sit down. So you got you to gotta work, work with me. I'm going to go real fast. So the Bible says that, that this angel Gabriel approached her and said, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Oh, what a phrase. This phrase actually interrupt and mess Mary's mind up. Blessed. Why are you calling me blessed? I am just a simple, simple young lady. And here this shining mighty angel is showing up and calling me blessed. As a matter of fact, Gabriel was, was, was singling her out from all other women. And call her blessings. And this thing troubled her because she couldn't understand why Gabriel is, is greeting her in this way. And then the angel said to her, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid because God is about to do something in your life. God is about to move in your life. God is about to change your perspective. God is about to elevate you a little bit higher. And so don't be afraid, Mary. Mary, you have found favor with God. It is a beautiful thing when we find favor with God. As a matter of fact, when we find favor with God, God is moving in a certain direction in your life to change the direction of your life. You see, favor simply means that God is hovering over you. And when God is hovering over you, God is about to 
impregnate Mary. God is about to do something to you. God is about to change your situation and my situation. And some of us may look and say, God, you can't do anything with me because I am messed up. I am nobody. I am tore up from the floor up. And so, God, you can't do anything with me. But when God has shown favor unto you, God can change your situation. God can make you into what he wants you to be. All you got to do is say, God, I surrender. And once you surrender, God takes over and God shows favor. Favor comes when we surrender to God. Favor comes when God is allowed to move in your life. Mary, you found favor. I declare today that someone in this place have found favor with God. I declare today that someone in this place has found favor with God. This year has been a trying year. You have been battered from east to west, from north to south. The devil has been on your back, chasing you down. Your family has been in trouble. Your finances in trouble. Your children in trouble. Your home in trouble. And you want to know when is God going to show up and do something something for you. I declare today that favor or the favor of God is upon you. Someone is going to find favor from God. See, the devil has been messing with you. The devil has been messing with you. But God wants to do something in your life if you would but just let him. I declare today that God has stopped by somebody's address like he stopped by Mary's address. And God is saying to someone today that the favor that I have given unto Mary, that same favor I'm giving unto you today. Do not be afraid. This greeting that overshadowed Mary. Fast forward in verse 34. Mary said to the angel, after the angel said to her, you are going to have a child. You are going to conceive and bring forth a child. Now Mary said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Something is wrong with this picture. I'm a virgin. No one has ever entered my sacred space. Ah! I have been keeping myself because I have been betrothed. I, I am supposed to be married. So, so no one, and not even my husband, has touched me. He, he, he hasn't even kissed me because I was saving myself for her, for him. Mm. If I had time to tell you, I will tell you that if you're single, there's certain things that you need to keep yourself and save yourself from. Oh, uh, sometimes we, we think that a little kiss is not, you know, it's okay if he can just stop by and just give me a little kiss every now and again. And we get into those corners, and those, those and the nice sofas and couches, and then the next thing you know, your, 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 your purity has been given up. Mary found herself, she, she, she purposed that this is not what she was going to do. She was going to save herself. And because she was saving herself, God gave favor unto her. Ooh, I wish somebody here made a day. Uh, because you are saving yourself, young man, young woman, God is going to give you favor. You, you may wonder where she is or where he is, but I, I, I got news for you. He's on his way or she's on her way, on her way. You just got to wait. Oh, you got to wait and see that God is good. Mary said, how can this be since I do not know a man? How can I get pregnant and have, give birth to a son 
They used to call his name Jesus, and I don't know a man. I've got to let you understand this word that, that is used in the New Testament that Dr. Luke uses, this word that says no. It's a word that is found in other places in the Bible. Can I explain it? Can I take a moment to explain it? This Greek word is called, is gnosko. And this word simply means no one, ah, no one has sexual intercourse with me. You find the word in Genesis chapter 19, verse 18, when it explains what it means. It simply means that no one, has sex with me. I, I haven't had sex. So if I didn't have sex, if I didn't know someone, if I didn't have sex with a man, then how can I give birth to a child? Oh, but here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit, ah, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you, mm, and he will overshadow you. In other words, mm, no man has had sexual intercourse with you. But the Holy Spirit is about to do something in your life. Ah, God is about to do something in your life. So the Holy Spirit is going to have intercourse with you. The Holy Spirit is going to get inside of you. Can I tell you something, my brothers and sisters? If you want God to do something in your life, you've got to let the Holy Spirit get inside of you and pregnate you with his spirit. Oh, you, 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 you. It is only when the Holy Spirit gets inside of a person that you can give birth to love, to joy, to peace, to long-suffering, to gentleness, to kindness, to meekness, to temperance. I declare today that some of you have not had intercourse with the Holy Spirit because you have no joy, you have no peace, you have no love, you're not long-suffering, you're not temperate, you're not kind. So if you are not those things, it tells me that the Holy Spirit has not in impregnate you. I declare today that you need the Holy Spirit to hover over you. You need the Holy Spirit to come upon you. Oh, just like he came upon Mary and what Mary didn't know yeah, that nine months later she would give birth to the Son of God. But if I stop there, you wouldn't get it. You've got to go with me. God said, Oh, Mary, this stuff that you're going through, it is impossible with man. But with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. In other words, your, your family member, your relative Elizabeth, not too long ago, I stopped by Elizabeth. Elizabeth was barren. Elizabeth couldn't give birth to a child. Elizabeth's womb was all locked up. Not only that, her husband was of old age. So you, you can't do much when you get old. Ah, yeah. Stuff started to swizzle up. Ah, stuff started to retract. And you get to a point where you can't do much. So not only was he in a bad position, but she was also in a bad position. She was old and barren, the Bible says. But somehow, God got hold of that thing. God got hold of the husband. God got hold of Elizabeth. And before she know it, Elizabeth has a child in her womb. You see, when man says it's impossible, God says it's possible. 
when man tells you that you can't achieve anything or you can't do anything. You got to let them know, yes, of yourself, you can't do anything. But with God on your side, when the Holy Spirit has impregnated you, when the Holy Spirit is in you, there is nothing that is impossible for you to do. As a matter of fact, you, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you've got faith enough to look at any tree or any obstacle that is in your way, you can say to that thing, Get out of my way. And the Bible says it will have to move for you. So if you've got problems, if you had problems in 2015, you better tell it, get out of my way. Because now I've found favor by God. Now the Holy Spirit has impregnated me. The Holy Spirit is in me. And not only am I now lovely, I'm also kind. I'm also patient. Because before, if you used to, if you tell me something, I would tell you off. But now, I've got patience. Not on my own. I'm, no, I'm not going to curse you out anymore. Because the Holy Spirit is in me. The Holy Spirit has taken hold of me. So now, I love you when I would hate you. When you do me wrong... I still will love you. Ah, when you cheat on me, I still gonna love you. Ah, when you when you slap me on one cheek, guess what? Jesus said, turn the other, and I'm gonna still love you. You see, because the Holy Spirit is in you. If the Holy Spirit of God is in you, nothing is impossible for God to do. God can move any mountain that is in your way. God can move any problem that is in your way. God can set you up. God can bring you down. God can spin you around because he is God and he is God all alone. Nothing, my brothers and sisters, nothing is too hard for God to do. If you think that God can change your life. Uh, let me tell you today that God can change anybody if you would but let him because favor, hey, favor is on you. God's favor is on your life. Uh, just surrender like Mary did. And Mary said, Lord, according to your word, have your way. We've got to let God have his way in our lives. The problem why we are so stuck, why, why, why our faces look so mean, uh, why we behave like, 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 like good cannibals. Uh, uh, the problem is we have not yet had a brush by the Spirit of God. You see, so many of us can pretend that God is, is in us. But God is not in us if we are living a life contrary to his will. Ah, you see, my brothers and sisters, this favor, this thing that God wants to do in your life, God can only do it if you surrender your life to him. No other way. You see, God wants to change some of your lives. But you've got to let the Holy Spirit come upon you. You've got to let the Holy Spirit overshadow you. Oh, nothing. The angel said to Mary, is impossible. We see the same word in Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17. Here, Jeremiah is on this trip and God says, now I'm going to read from, from, from verse 16. Jeremiah is praying for understanding of what God is about to do. And now when I had delivered the purchase deed to Brock, the son of Neal, I prayed to the Lord saying, oh Lord God, behold, 
you have, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched hands. Here is it. There is nothing too hard for you to do. In other words, Jeremiah is saying, God, if you made this world, with your outstretched hands. If you step out and spoke things into existence, Jeremiah is acknowledging that there is nothing that is too hard for God to do. Jeremiah goes on and says, you show love and kindness to thousands and you repay the iniquity of the fallen into the bosom of their children after them. The great and mighty God, whose name is the Lord of hosts, you are great in counsel and mighty in work. For your eyes upon all the ways of the sons of men. To give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. In other words, Jeremiah understand that God is able to do anything and you and I need to understand today that God is able to do anything. If God created this heaven and earth, if God formed the world, if God caused the sea to move out of the way of the children of Israel so they can go through on dry land, if God caused food to fall from the heavens to feed the children of Israel, if God caused them to wander in the desert for 40 years with one pair of sandals and nothing went wrong with the sandals. As a matter of fact, I declare when they got out to the promised land and they looked at the shoes, they realized that the shoes were newer than when they started because when God starts you at a particular place, you never end up at the end the same way. You see, God started you old, but when you step with Jesus, when you walk with Jesus, when you talk, with Jesus, when you live with Jesus, when he is inside of you, you will never, never, never be the same again. Mary, I declare, was not the same again. She was a different woman because the Holy Ghost was inside of her. Oh, fast forward. The Bible says that Mary took off the angel, left and Mary went to visit Elizabeth, the one that was barren. Oh, Mary had no idea what she was going to experience. You see, she made her way to Elizabeth's home. When she got to Elizabeth's home, something happened inside of Elizabeth's womb. The Bible says it happened when Elizabeth heard the voice of Mary. She heard the greeting from Mary. The Bible said that baby that was in that barren woman's stomach, uh, that baby leaped for joy uh, because that baby understood that what was in Elizabeth was given by the Holy Ghost. It was the son of the living God. And so that baby inside of Elizabeth's stomach, John the Baptist by name, John the Baptist was not even able to really say anything. He wasn't even able to speak because he was still in the womb. Just six months in the womb, that baby started to leap. That baby started to move. And, and from one side to the other, you see, Mary understood that Elizabeth also was filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, my brothers and sisters, oh, can I tell you, can I preach this? When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, when you have been impregnated by the Holy Spirit, and you get to somebody who has been impregnated by the Holy Spirit, you can't help yourself. Nothing more that leaping and jumping and praising God takes place because when you are filled with the Spirit and I am filled with the Spirit, then we are on a mission for Jesus Christ. And when we come together, it's nothing but love, nothing but joy, nothing but peace. 
Oh, nothing but weeping. Nothing but crying. You see, this is what happens when the Holy Spirit had a chance to impregnate us. Verse 44 says, For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting is heard, sounding in my ear, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. What I want to tell you here, Goshen, when the Holy Ghost is in you and God's favor is on you and you have allowed God to impregnate you with his Holy Spirit. Ah, you get to know God intimately. Ah, you get to know God in such a way that a man will only know his wife. You get to know that feeling that is beyond any feeling that you can ever begin to imagine or think of. Mm. When you get to know God that way, in that intimate sense, Nothing but joy is a result. Nothing but happiness is a result. So you can know somebody who knows Jesus. You can know somebody who has been pregnated by the Holy Spirit. Because all they can talk about is the joy of the Lord. All they can talk about is how good God has been to them. All they can talk about is, come all oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. All they can talk about is how good God has been to them. I could just imagine if all of us have been allowed the Holy Spirit to get into us and we have that relationship that he needs us to have. I can just imagine when you walk into this place, oh, oh, they'll be leaping, they'll be jumping, they'll be joy unspeakable. Mary this virgin, impregnated by the Holy Spirit. She couldn't help after, after Elizabeth told her how the baby leaped inside of her. She couldn't help but burst out in singing. She said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God of my salvation. For he had regarded the lowly state of his maid servant. For behold, from behold, henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. Mary burst out in song. Oh, when the Holy Spirit is in your life and has changed your life. When God start make things that was seemingly impossible possible in your life. When God has done something magnificent in your life. You can't help but burst out in singing. You can't help but burst out in praise. Some of us, our praise might not be all loud and, and jumping. Because let me tell you something. Not everybody that's jumping has been impregnated with the Holy Spirit. Some of us have been impregnated with the wrong spirit. You need a Holy Ghost. Because if you don't have a relationship on Monday. If you don't know him on Tuesday. If you don't know him on Wednesday, if you don't know him on Thursday, if he has not been good to you on Friday, you can't expect to come in to the house of the Lord on Sabbath and start jumping and start leaping and start praising. You have not been with Jesus all week. You've got to know Jesus. The word is gnosko. You need to have an intimate, permanent relationship with him. That is not just how some of us husbands treat our wives. I'm going to leave that alone, though. 
It's that relationship that says, I need to know you every day. I need to talk with you every day. You are mine because you are mine. Because I bought you with a price. You better talk to me every day. So when you talk to God every day, God starts to show favor in your life. You can look at Comet. And you can say, Comet, I don't have this bill. I don't have this money. But I know somebody, oh, who can get into your computer system. And when he gets into your computer system, he can take my thousand dollar bill and he can say, one strike, zero, you owe nothing. I know a God who can show favor if you've been with him and his Holy Spirit has been with you. I remember in my life, let me tell you, let me tell you, I'm about to finish. $4,000 was my bill. Speak God. They showed up yesterday. And they said, they're coming back tomorrow. They're going to shut you down. I said, well, God, I don't have it. I need your favor. Because I need my power. So God, I'm going to go down into my office where we talk morning. When I got down into my office and I got on my knees and said, Father, not my bill, but your bill. Because you know that I don't have it. Ah, zero is in the bank. But I thank you that I know a God who owns a cattle on a thousand hills. I thank you that I know a God who can supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I thank you that I know a God who, who can show favor. And before I got up off of my knees, my telephone rang. I pick up the phone and a friend on the other line, a friend that I didn't talk to in so many years, he said, brother, how you doing? I called to pray with you. I said, brother, let's pray because I sure need God right about now. And my brother said, don't worry about it. Here is my credit card. We're going to take that $4,000 and we're going to put it on my credit card. And guess what? It's not a gift. It's not something that you've got to give me back. It's something that I want to give you. And that bill was wiped out. I just stopped by to tell you, Goshen, that God can do the impossible. There is nothing that is impossible with God. All you got to do is allow his Holy Spirit to get inside of you. Allow him to impregnate you. You've got to get to know him for yourself. He's not that Facebook kind of God. He's a personal God. He's a God that wants to know you. And he wants you to know him. Because he's a God that wants to change your life. God wants to interrupt in some of your situations. But God is not able to interrupt and change your situation. Because you are not willing to say, Lord, let it be done to me as you please. It was in Mary's total surrender. That everyone was able to call her blessing. Somebody needs to surrender to Jesus today. You want favor. But you need more than favor. 
Some of you need to come back to Jesus. Some of you need to surrender your life completely to Jesus. Some of you have known him from a distance, but you need to know him who is life eternal. You need Jesus in your life. Aaron sing something. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I am everything I need. He helps me to rest in the meadows, grass, and trees. Leads me beside the quiet streams and he restores my failures and he helps me to do what I Get yourself together. That's 
That's what the Lord is saying today. The time is drawing nigh. The time is drawing nigh. I was reminded last night when the kids were over the youth, and you know, when you're at the end of the quarter, the last quarter in a baseball game, and you've done all that you could do. You've ran, you've gone from base to base, and you've gone from place to place. But when you're at that last stretch and that, that player dives in, Jesus is right there to stand next to the enemy and say that you are. Somebody will get that tomorrow, but somebody needs to know that you're safe. Safe, 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 safe. you're safe in, in the Lord's arms. Give God praise. There's somebody you're here today and you may have run out of God's favor by not allowing him into your life. But you want to say, I want God to come into my life. I want to pray for you today. Just a simple prayer. Maybe you have been part of God's church, but you have stepped out of his favor. But you want to step back into his favor. The Holy Spirit is saying to me today that somebody is about to move out of God's favor by doing something that they want to do, not what God want them to do. But they have gotten it confused that what they're about to do is what God wants them to do. I want you to know you're confused today. Because anything that is against God is not what he wants to, you to do, but you're moving outside of his favor. And I want you to know today that you need to change that circumstances. Some of you are about to let go of God's hands. This is not the time. This is not the time. This is the time for us to get close to Jesus. You see, I learned something a long time ago. I, I don't like to be whipped. I never like whippings or whoopings. So I always try to stay on the good side of the person with the whip in their hands. You see, it's one thing when man whips you, but it's another thing when gods start to whip you. See, I, I, I want you to stay in his hands. Stay close to him. Don't let him go because... When you move away from God, he is going to whip you. Because the Bible says who the Lord loves, he chastises. And his chastisement is not so that you can run away from him, but it's so that you can run to him. Does somebody want to run to Jesus today? If you want to run to him today, you have run away, you want to run to him, you want to come back. You just want to raise your hands and say, Preacher, pray for me. Pray for me. I want to pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. I see your hands. God bless you. God bless you. All over the room. Uh, heaven is rejoicing. Maybe there's some of you that need to fully turn your life over to Jesus. And say, God, I, I'm tired of ripping and running. I'm tired of 
trying to chase this world. And I just want to chase you. I want a heart that chases you. Would you raise your hands? I want to include you in the prayer. God bless you. God bless you. Eyes closed, your heads bowed. I want to pray for you. Father in heaven, you see the hands. You see the hands. You know the story. You know the situation. God, I pray that right now you will accept them into your fellowship. Lord, I pray right now that you will bless them. I pray right now, God, that you will hold them. I pray that you will cause them to every day to walk in the way you want them to walk. I, I pray, God, that as they surrender to you, that your Holy Spirit will impregnate them with power. Power to live right. Power to walk right. Power to talk right. Power to live right. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will cover your children. And finally, God, I pray that you will show favor on your children today. We've messed up. We've messed up. But God, would you, would you take us back into your favor? And Lord, will you help us to experience the joy that you have for us? In the mighty name of Jesus, let the church say amen. Let the church say praise the Lord. God be praised. God be praised at this time. We're about to have a baptism. Amen. And I'm going to ask Michael if he would join me on the platform. And I'm going to ask his lovely wife if she would also join me on the platform. And their daughter, come on up. I have been working with this family. I just love this family as I love all the other families. We've been working together. Pastor Fres, would you come on up? You, he's going to be administering the vows. But before that, I'm going to go and get changed. I would like to, uh, just, just to say how proud I am of this family. And how God has worked in their lives. So proud of the, Michael's decision. Uh, LaShawn took her decision a few weeks ago. And we're so glad that uh, he is... He is following in God's design and to be that husband, to be that spiritual guide to the home of his wife, his daughter, and his two sons. Before the vows, I'm just going to briefly entertain a motion that upon baptism that Michael Visser be entered into the family of the Goshen Seventh-day Adventist Church. He was already in the family of God. But just in the Goshen, the family, the Goshen of family, some, the, Go, the family of Goshen Seventh Day Adventist Church. Slow down, preacher. There's a move. There's so move. Is there a second? It's moving second. All in favor? Aye. No opposition. God be praised. Amen. Clap your hands in this place and give God some praise. Amen, amen. I am excited and I am enthused for the great things that God has for you, man. And um, as studied and as agreed, I'm going to go through each vow and you will answer in the affirmative. Amen. I believe in God the Father and his son Jesus Christ and in the Holy Ghost. I accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for my sins and believe that through faith in his shed blood, I am saved from sin and its penalty. I renounce the world and its sinful ways and have accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior and believe that God for Christ's sake 
has forgiven my sins and given me a new heart. I accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, recognizing him as my intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary and claim his promise to strengthen me by his indwelling spirit so that I may receive power to do his will. I believe that the Bible is God's inspired word and it constitutes the only rule of faith in practice for the Christian. I accept the Ten Commandments that they are still binding upon the Christian and it is my purpose by the power of the indwelling Christ to keep this law, including the fourth commandment, which requires the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath of the Lord. I look forward to the soon coming of Jesus Christ as the blessed hope in my heart, and I am determined to be ready to meet the Lord and to do all in my power to witness of his loving salvation and by life, word, and deed to help others to be ready for his glorious appearing. I accept the Bible teaching of spiritual gifts and believe that the gift of prophecy is one of the identifying marks of the remnant church. I believe in church organization and it is my purpose to support the church in my tithes and offering and by my personal effort and influence. I believe that my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost and I will honor God by caring for it, avoiding the use that which is harmful, abstaining from all unclean foods, from the use, manufacture, or sale of alcoholic beverage, the use, manufacture, or sale of tobacco in any of its form for human consumption, and, form, and from the misuse of trafficking in narcotics and other drugs. I know and understand the fundamental Bible principles as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and it is my purpose by the grace of God to order my life in harmony with these principles. I accept the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion and desiring to be so baptized as a public expression of my faith in Christ and his forgiveness of my sins. I accept the Seventh-day Adventist Church that it is the remnant church of Bible prophecy and that people of every nation, race, and language are invited and accepted into its fellowship and I desire to be a member of this local congregation of the World Church. Amen. Now, praise the Lord, everybody. Clap your hands and give Jesus Christ some praise. Amen. 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 As we prepare for the baptism, amen.
Pastor Mike, Michael Visser getting ready to give his life to the Lord. And he requests a favorite scripture to be read. It's 1 Thessalonians 1, 5 and 6. And it says, For our gospel came not unto you in words only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance as ye know what matters of men, we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. I would just want to ask all of the family members, the friends who have come just to witness Michael's big day. If you would just stand, amen, his lovely wife, Walter and Marshall. Marsha and Walter, who, who knew Michael for a long time, as a matter of fact, it's a great story. Uh, Michael was one of the dialysis technicians. That's how you met Marsha and Walter. And from there, we've had a relationship. I had the privilege of being in their homes and studying with them. We just had a wonderful time together. And God has been great. And uh, to see this day where Michael's decided to give his life completely over to the Lord. He called me last week or this week, and he said to me, and I, want to sh I think it was just so so strange, but not strange, it was just powerful, how God is moving in his life even today. He said, you know, fast, I couldn't eat. I'm just fasting. Uh, yeah, just, and I said to him, that is the old man killing the old man and allowing a new man, a new rebirth to take place. Uh, he had another experience, which I thought it was powerful. Uh, you know, he came home and he was just starting to, to throw up and things of that nature. His lovely wife by his side and came to the realization that maybe I, I, I've got to give up this eating the sausage kind of meat. Again, God in my, my prophetic mind, God is moving and cleaning and changing his life. And I'm so glad to have the privilege of baptizing Mike today. It, it is a great honor to baptize him. Mike, because you decide to give the Lord your heart, because you decide to surrender your life to him, you decide that you want to start and fresh with Jesus, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Father in heaven, I pray today in the mighty name of Jesus. As when Jesus was baptized and the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended as a dove on Jesus, I pray today that the heavens is open and that the Holy Spirit descend upon Mike. I pray that you will fill him, baptize him with fire from the Holy Ghost so that he will go out to become a great disciple for you. He may go out and tell the world that Jesus lives. He may go out and, and win many souls for you. So God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will encircle him, encircle his family. And Lord, send him forth with the command that you have commanded all of us to go and make disciples of every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father 
and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name I declare, amen and amen. God bless you. So, I'm proud because I, I never cry at weddings or funerals or anything, but baptisms yeah. are the one thing that can get me almost there. And I, I got to hold it in and go in the back room, sorry. Uh, but I just want to say, you know, the Lord has ordained us, you know, to spread the gospel and to spread truth unto the world. He has ordained that method. Uh, and he has ordained that this be powered by the offerings, by the tithe, and by the efforts of us. He has called man to be collaborators with him, doing his work. And it's going to be a wonderful thing because, you know, after that first resurrection, and we are spending time with Christ, we'll be able to say we contributed yeah. to this thing. Yeah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful, Lord, because we know that all things come from you, Lord, and, and that without you, we will have no money to pay our bills. We will have no family members to help us with things around the house or whatever it is, Lord God. And we are just grateful, Lord, that you give to us so that we have the opportunity to give back to you, Lord. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.
guests that you please stand for the benediction. Now the grace and the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and, and abide in each of our hearts now, henceforth, and forevermore. <laughs> If you would just remain seated, we'd like to give the baptismal certificate out at this time. Okay, if um, Mr. and Mrs. Visser would come, Vassar would come and join us. We have uh, LaShawn got uh, baptized on the 21st. Amen. And it says baptism symbolizes a confession of faith in Christ, adoption into the family of God, and commission for service. And I guess Michael is still getting dressed. We'll just, we'll just give the wife the, uh, uh, Michael's uh, certificate, and as we go out, proceed, just give, her the, uh, give both of them, apparently, uh, the right hand of fellowship. 